great. Well, I will um, kick off and I'm sure some more people will um, join as we go. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Georgia Mason. I'm director of the Campbell Center for the Study of Animal Welfare at the University of Guelph. And Guelph is, of course, located on the traditional lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit, who are one of the Anishinaabeg peoples. And so we acknowledge that with respect and gratitude. So since January, we've been coming together to learn more about indigenous views of animals. And while of course they're very diverse, a common theme that's emerged is, has been to look at animals as, um, as our kin and all my relations view that long predates Darwin and that affects what might be seen as right ways to use or treat animals. And so for our last speaker, Margaret Robinson, the logical conclusion of this view was to look with some concern at how farm animals are treated and personally become become a vegan. And for the Honourable Murray Sinclair, another logical conclusion of this view was to work with Jane Goodall to um, devise additional protections for certain wild animal species who might have particular welfare concerns in captivity. And so that's what we're going to hear about today in the, la in the last one of this series. So I'm really thrilled to introduce um, the Honourable Marty Klein, um, who's um, a senator. He was elected to the, appointed to the Senate in 2018. Um, you might possibly know him as Mr. Regina, if you're on Twitter. <laughs> Um, his background is in business, including banking and publishing, but as a Cree Métis, he's also been a real champion for Indigenous interests. He lectures um, at the First Nations University of Canada, and he took over leading this bill once the Honourable um, Murray, Murray Sinclair retired, and he's going to talk to us today about Bill S-241, its history, its aims, and what happens next. Um, Senator Klein, I'm so honoured to to hear you today and really excited to hear you speak. The floor is yours. Well, thank you and uh, welcome to everyone. And uh, it's good morning here. I'm in, uh, in the uh, West. So I just want to begin by thanking Professor Georgia Mason for that introduction. And also thanks to the Campbell Center for the Study of Animal Welfare, the University of Guelph and to everyone participating in today's discussion. I'm honored to speak to you from Regina, Saskatchewan, situated on Territory 4, Treaty 4 territory, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. I also relate to you that I am a member of Little Black Bears Band, which is all Treaty Council, Tribal Council in Treaty 4 territory. Wherever you find yourself, I hope you'll join me in expressing respect for Indigenous peoples and their lands and values, and in recommitting ourselves to the path of truth and reconciliation in our nation of nations. As we will discuss, this path includes reconciliation with the natural world, as with reconciliation between peoples, and youth can play the most important role. Slide, please. First, we'll start with the Jane Goodall Act. Um, with this in mind, I'm humbled to join you as the second sponsor of federal animal protection and legislation known as the Jane Goodall Act or Bill S-241. I'm also honored to pay tribute today to the original bill's author and sponsor, the Honorable Murray Sinclair, who has inspired Canadians to build a better future in many ways. I have brought forward this bill with his blessing and guidance and as well that of world-renowned conservationist and scientist, Dr. Jane Goodall. First off, how exciting is it that these two exceptional leaders teamed up on a bill to protect animals? I remember hearing Senator Sinclair's powerful and uplifting speech on the Jane Goodall Act and thinking, this bill needs to pass. Wouldn't it be just wonderful if it does? I've always had a heart for animals, the idea of their suffering bothers me, and I have known some as friends and treated them as family. So leading up to his retirement last year, when Senator Sinclair asked me, I didn't hesitate to take the handoff. I was honored and accepted it as such, an honor and a privilege. Bill S-241 reflects the harmony of scientific and indigenous knowledge about nature. Both sources tell us that life is inter interconnected and that human activities are causing animals to tragically face cruelty and mass extinction right now, today. 
as we know, or pardon me, as we work to change this course, I will speak to you about the Honorable Murray Sinclair's vision for animal and environmental protection based in Indigenous values and realized in part by the Jane Goodall Act. Next slide, please. Introduced last month, Bill S-241, if passed, would establish the strongest legal protections in the world for over 800 species of captive wild animals. Species that the bill would ban at roadside zoos include great apes, who are our closest living relatives, includes chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans, exotic and dangerous big cats like lions and tigers, all species of Canadian wildcats, including cougars, lynx, and bobcats. Bears, including Canadian black bears, grizzlies, and polar bears. Wolves, coyotes, jackals, and other large, large wild canines, and hyenas. All seals, sea lions, and walruses, some of whom have been used in circus-style shows in recent years at Marineland in Niagara Falls. Over 100 species of primates, including monkeys and bush babies, and dangerous reptiles, including crocodiles and alligators, giant pythons and anacondas, and over 600 species of venomous snakes. It is incredible to me, and I'm sure to you, to discover that owning, breeding, and trading these species does not currently require a license in most of Canada. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Similar to Canada's 2019 whale and dolphin captivity laws, which Senator Sinclair also sponsored, the Jane Goodall Act would phase out elephant captivity nationwide on animal welfare grounds. That's because elephants are intelligent, social, far ranging and huge, and they should not be kept indoors, but during our cold winters, Canadian winters, they are. <clears throat> Senator Sinclair painted an awe-inspiring portrait of the lives of wild elephants. For anyone interested to hear or listen to his speech on the bill, you can, in, uh, <clears throat> you can find that on the, on the uh, Senate website. The Jane Goodall Act also addresses the unsustainable global wildlife trade by encouraging the government to improve regulatory restrictions. For example, the bill promotes a ban on the trade in elephant ivory and rhino horn, two practices during these, uh, driving these species rapidly towards extinction. The bill also looks to enhance restrictions on species posing invasive species or disease risks and to curb imp the import of live animals from the wild. In addressing the use of wildlife, the bill's measures fully respect traditional and sustainable Indigenous harvesting practices and trades taking place in Canada since time immemorial. To emphasize and communicate respect for Indigenous inherent rights, the bill contains a six, Section 35 constitutional non-derogatory clause. Next slide, please. Notably, the bill would establish limited legal standing for all affected species in captivity, including whales and dolphins, allowing the relo their relocation with costs if illegal breeding or performance for entertainment occurs. Expanding legal standing to other beings, as is, the, as is a point that Senator Sinclair is particularly enthusiastic about from a legal and philo philosophical point of view. For his detailed perspective, you can read this, his 2020 essay in Maclean's. For example, he's quick to point out that corporations are legal persons, so we should extend this legal standing to at least some other beings who are like us, such as great apes. After all, why are humans and our abstract legal inventions the only entities that should have legal rights? Lawyers from the United States who were consulted on the original bill are currently fighting in the New York Court of Appeal to establish legal personhood for a lone elephant at the Bronx Zoo named Happy. The Honorable Murray Sinclair saw a promising and positive path forward through the idea of legal standing for animals having parallels with laws in some countries known as rights of nature, a legal movement often led by the Indigenous peoples. 
For example, last year in Quebec, the Inu Council of Ikornachit and the municipality of Megani collaborated to recognize the Magpie River as a legal person. The river now has nine legal rights, including the rights to flow, to maintain, maintain its biodiversity, and to take legal action. Bodies of water have also received legal rights in New Zealand, India, Bangladesh, Ohio, Bolivia, Equator, and Colombia have legally protected the rights of nature. In Minnesota, the White Earth Nation and Anishinaabe people has granted legal rights to wild rice. The Jane Goodall Act is related to this movement by treating captive wild animals as much more than private property. Uh, much more than private property. This bill treats our fellow creatures as sentient beings deserving of an understand of understanding, empathy, and justice. These laws and bills ask us to protect nature, not only for our own benefit, though it does benefit, benefit us in the long term, but for the sake of nature itself. Next slide, please. Legally, I say the Jean, Jane Goodall Act will be the strongest law in the world for captive wild animals because of the use of criminal animal cruelty laws, the establishment of limited legal standing, the number of species covered for priority protection, and the ongoing possibility of adding more wild species. The bill's preamble also encourages Ontario to grant civil standing to the lone orca, Kiska, at Marine Land in Niagara Falls, to allow, allow for her relocation by her own right to the whale sanctuary planned at Port, Port Hilford, Nova Scotia. Perhaps I should clarify that the bill would establish among the strongest laws in the world for animals. After all, many indigenous traditional practices, values and legal orders have treated animals far better than the laws of contemporary states and European legal traditions. For example, indigenous nations in Canada have relied on and stewarded animals and plants in balance since time immemorial with reciprocity and gratitude taking only what people have needed for their well-being. Colonialism brought imbalance to nature in North America, such as with the commercial slaughter of the great white whales, the extin extinction of the passenger pigeon, once the most numerous bird on earth, the eradication of most populations of the Atlantic walrus, the collapse of fisheries, the dust bowl in the plains, the destruction of old growth forests, and the capture of wild animals like orcas for display. Perhaps most notorious was the slaughter of the bison that once sustained prairie nations, hunted from what was once over 50 million down to a, under 1,000 by the late 1880s during the time of the railway and the numbered treaties. Next slide, please. These activities wiped out indigenous people's sustainable wealth and radically altered their lifestyles and economies. In Canada's past, religious tolerance, intolerance, I should say, and policies of assimilation sought to replace spiritual relationships of reciprocity with nature, with an attitude of domination and shame in indigenous beliefs. Understood in this context, the Jane Goodall Act is as much a restoration of ancient respect between human beings and our planet, a respect still carried by many indigenous people, as much as the bill is an example of modern, modern scientific and legal progress. So we can say that the bill may become the strongest law in today's context, but only by returning us to ancient understandings of connection with nature. Rediscovering that wisdom can help us change course on subjects like climate change, deforestation, overfishing, pollution, and animal cruelty. This, can, this bill can be a small but powerful step in the right direction at this time of both environmental crisis and reconciliation with nature. Next slide, please. As related earlier, the Jane Goodall Act's first sponsor was the original bill's author, a hero to you and me, 
to Canada and to the cause of upholding Indigenous peoples' inherent rights around the world, the Honourable Murray Sinclair. We know Murray Sinclair as a public figure, figure, a companion of the Order of Canada as of this year, and the Chancellor of Queen's University. We also know him as former Senator and a former judge. In fact, he was the first Indigenous judge in Manitoba and the second in Canada. Perhaps most of all, we know Murray Sinclair is the Chair of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada, or TRC, guiding our country to understand residential schools and their legacy and to answer the 94 calls to action. By showing, showing us the truth and calling us to action, the TRC's wisdom has lit a path to a better society for all con Canadians, Indigenous and non-Indigenous alike. The TRC's work has truly changed our country's course and made a difference globally as we witness the Pope apologizing on the world stage. In answering the 94 calls, already Canada is making major headway on reconciliation, as with Parliament's passage last year of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, or UNDRIP. With UNDRIP and in the past years with Section 35 constitutional rights and relevant to this bill, the restoration of Indigenous jurisdiction over traditional territory can have massive environmental and animal welfare benefits. Next slide, please. Here are a few examples of Indigenous-led conservation efforts that contribute to Canada's environmental protection goals and the well-being of animals. In 2019, Thai Nene came into existence as a 14,000 square kilometer national reserve park in the Northwest Territories, co-managed by Lutzel Ke Dene, First Nation and the Canadian government. Other examples include 64,000 square kilometer Great Bear Rainforest in BC, the 29,000 square kilometer Pimamacha Win Eke in Manitoba and Ontario, being the largest protected area in the North American Boreal Shield, and the 108,000 square kilometer Talurutia Imanaga Nation Marine Conservation Area in Nunavut, more than twice the size of Nova Scotia. Subsequent generations will benefit most of all from the actions we take today to reconcile and restore Indigenous self determination and to respect Indigenous leadership, values, and to ter territorial jurisdiction. As reconciliation proceeds, in answering, to, in answering the calls to action, wrongs are being righted, nations rebuilt, lands and waters protected, opportunities shared, and relationships improved. In thinking about Murray Sinclair's many roles in Canada as an elder, a leader and a scholar. I cannot help but see him as a teacher speaking through his words and actions, including the bills he sponsored and created. So let me share a few lessons on protecting animals and the environment from Murray Sinclair's work, including the Jane Goodall Act. I'll touch on three examples of his teachings about indigenous values. We can then consider the leadership of indigenous senators to pass the whale and dolphin bill Dolphin Captivity Bill in 2019 and closed by reflecting on the coalition that has rallied behind the Jane Goodall Act, the sequel to that landmark legislation. Next slide, please. The first lesson is about traditional Indigenous understandings of nature and how reviving such teachings can benefit us and our planet. In 2019, after passing the Whale Captivity Bill, Senator Sinclair wrote a, a foreword in the Canadian Journal of Comparative and Contemporary Law. As a Nishinaabe person, he wrote, and this is a long passage, I quote, it is said among, uh, said among the Ojibwe that in the beginning before the beginning, a Nishinaabe was weak and lost and unable to come to terms with their existence. Finding the daily ch challenges of life difficult to manage and suffering from inner turmoil and sickness, they did not know how to cure. 
They mistreated each other, bickered constantly, saw all outsiders as threats, and were even unable to feed themselves properly. It is said that at that time, the animals, animal beings of creation, who had been observing all of this, called a great council to discuss one question. What shall we do to help Anishinaabe? They agreed on one thing at the, the, at the outset. Something must be done. For if, if Anishinaabe failed to survive and thrive, then all of creation was threatened, including them. After long discussion, it is said that one by one, each of the animal leaders stepped forward to announce its commitment to help Anishinaabe and what they would do. The bear stated that because he walked constantly in the woods, he would protect Anishinaabe from outside attack. He further announced that because he spent so much time among the plants, he knew where all the medicines were and he would show them to Anishinaabe and help him learn how to use them for healing. The deer and other hoofed creatures offered themselves as a source of food for Anishinaabe to consume in times of hunger. The eagle promised to fly over Anishinaabe's territory each morning to see how he was doing and watch over him. One by one, each of the animal beings of creation committed to do what was within his ability to keep Anishinaabe alive. That teaching was repeated over many millennia and generation after generation of ch uh, children understood its importance, that we are all related, not just you and I, but you and I and all forms, life forms of creation. As living things, we are created to each other. We depend on one another. Everything we do has an effect on other life forms on our world. That is why we use the term Nikona Situk, all of my relations when addressing each other. Indigenous peoples are hunter-gatherer societies, always careful to respect the natu natural life cycles of the animals with which they shared the earth. Efforts were made not to overfish, overhunt, or overharvest. Every part of the animal was used, and there were celebrations and ceremonies of appreciation for taking, the, taking and use of the animal. This has been the attitude in many indigenous traditions, it is one of stewardship and respect. Most of those beliefs were taken or withheld from the several generations of indigenous children who were placed in residential schools. In addition, the demeaning treatment of indigenous cultures as inferior, paganistic and shameful drove many indigenous children away from them, even if they did not attend residential school. Their loss of pride stopped them from wanting to know on a massive scale. But now those teachings are enjoyed or are enjoying a revival that far exceeds the pace of loss, limited only by the low numbers of those who know. Yet the depth of belief and commitment to them is strong and is embraced by many the world over who sense the wrongheadedness of ignoring the beauty of life in all its forms." End quote. So here we can see that a traditional understanding of an indigenous relationship with nature has many lessons for us today in terms of respect for the planet and the life forms who sustain our collective well-being and also reasserting indigenous identities and belief. Next slide, please. The second teaching I will share comes from the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, a pivotal document in the Canadian public life, as referenced by Senator Sinclair in introducing the Jane Goodall Act, I quote, Reconciliation between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Canadians from an Ab Aboriginal perspective also requires reconciliation with the natural world. If human beings resolve problems between themselves, but to continue to destroy the natural world, then their reconciliation remains incomplete. This is a perspective that we as commissioners have repeatedly heard, that reconciliation will never occur unless we also are also reconciled with the earth. Uh, 
Mi'kmaq and other indigenous laws stress that humans must journey through life in conversation and negotiation with all creation. Reciprocity and mutual respect help sustain our survival, end quote. The lesson here is clear. True reconciliation with each other requires reconciliation with nature and living in balance with other beings. The reference to Mi'kmaq and Mi'kmaq law is particularly notable in the Senate. I have heard Mi'kmaq Senators Dan and Christmas and Brian Francis refer to the principle of Nadula Glimp, meaning the respectful use of natural bounty provided by the Creator. They have referenced this concept in speaking of indigenous rights to co manage treaty fisheries and the case of Senator Christmas in successfully championing legislation to protect marine and freshwater fish habitat. This is an example of indigenous laws and values influencing Canada's laws of general application in our legislatures and gaining the respect they have always deserved. The restoration is a benefit to all Canadians due to greater indigenous representation in parliament, including since the independent Senate reform of 2015 with about 10% of senators now being indigenous. Senator Sinclair has said that he views the Senate when acting at its best as Canada's Council of Elders. As such, it is the responsibility of senators to speak and act to protect animals and the environment, a guiding principle I seek to uphold. Next slide, please. The third teaching I'll share with you from Senator Sinclair are his words showing reconciliation with nature and action through the Jane Goodall Act. The bill's preamble begins with, in, with the invocation of the phrase, all my relations, noting that this expression, an indigenous understanding that all life forms of creation are in, interconnected and interdependent. In his speech on the original bill, Senator Sinclair, Senator Sinclair elaborated on this understanding and the realization of this principle in measures of the bill. He said, and I quote, when we treat animals well, we act with both self-respect and mutual respect. The understanding imposes responsibilities. We're at a critical time where the interrelated goals of indigenous rights, environmental protection, and animal welfare can help to combat cultural loss, climate change, and mass extinction in Canada and beyond. An important alliance is building to achieve these related objectives based on mutual respect and shared determination. In indigenous cultures, animal uses, in indigenous cultures, animal uses, uses exist but only in taking what communities need for their own well-being. Indigenous traditions teach respect, gratitude, and stewardship. These values may guide us as we consider practices involving our animal relations. We live in a time of great challenge with the natural world in peril. However, we also live in a time of great hope with social values increasingly reflecting a moral and spiritual awakening. We can yet save this beautiful planet along with indigenous cultures and knowledge and the sacred and innocent animals who deserve our compassion. In moving this bill forward, Jane Goodall and I believe that the most powerful advocates eventually will be youth, including her Roots and Shoots organization. Disrespect for animals is taught behavior, and we may find that children have a lesson to teach us. My grandchildren, quite frankly, are excited about this bill, and I hope yours will be too. For any parents and teachers listening across the country, we want to hear from your kids as we look to rediscover their forgotten wisdom about animals." End quote. Next slide, please. <clears throat> I think that uh, that was a beautiful passage, and I could almost end there. But let me tell you a little about a bit about why I think we can pass the Jane Goodall Act if we work together and don't give up. 
The answer is that indigenous centers and allies already passed the 2019 Whale and Dolphin Captivity Laws against ab absolutely all odds. This is a Senate public bill, a kind of private member's bill, and very such bills ever pass. In 2017, Senator Murray Sinclair sponsored the bill known as S203, following the mandatory retirement of the original sponsor and creator, Senator Willie Moore. At the time, the bill didn't look like it would make it, facing determined opposition. Yet together with other Indigenous senators, Senator Sinclair eventually led supporters to victory three and a half years after the bill's introduction, completing the longest successful legislative process in Canadian history. I won't comment on the bill's opposition because the Jane Goodall Act is a new and inclusive initiative brought in a positive and forward-looking spirit. But I would note that at the whale bill's moment of reckoning, between the Senate committee vote after 20 some hearings, indigenous senators substituted onto the committee as a show of solidarity, winning the vote with their allies. To my knowledge, this remarkable gesture is without precedent before or since. Senator Sinclair was quoted in the media as follows, and I quote, I will not tell you their response was deliberate, I will not tell you it wasn't deliberate. Since Senator Sinclair said with a smile, I can only tell you that that's the way it happened. In winning the vote, Senator Clinton Sinclair used his legal expertise to move amendments that preserve protections for whales while building greater consensus on the committee. In so doing, he established in Canadian law for the first time the protection of individual animals' best interests, a concept that normally applies to children or other persons requiring legal guardians. During proceedings, the allied coastal First Nations of the Pacific Northwest pro proactively endorsed the well bill stating, I quote, as stewards of much of Canada's Pacific coast, we are in a unique position to speak to the importance of protecting whales and dolphins while keeping them in the wild where they belong. Mi'kmaq Senator Dan, Dan Christmas had perhaps the most memorable lines in the, date, in the debate on whale captivity, stating as he looked to call a vote, and I quote, when I think of whales of objects then yes, it does make sense that we should put them in pens and use them for research and education. But something tells me in my mind and heart that that is the wrong approach. We really have to see whales as our equals, as living beings. If I had an opportunity to ask a beluga, I think it would ask, what is best for your family? This perspective later inspired his seminar with Nova Scotia's planned whale sanctuary entitled, What I Wish I Could Ask a Whale. Cree Senator and residential school survivor, Mary Jane McCallum closed the historic debate as the last speaker in support. She said, and I quote, this issue of animal cruelty is unacceptable in the 21st century in and of itself. This concern is compounded by, by my personal belief, shared by many, that having these majestic and intelligent animals in captivity is simply unnatural. It is against the very nature, biology, and physiology of these animals to, to be swimming around in tanks when they are wired and built for the vastness of an ocean." End quote. And with that, the bill passed the Senate on to becoming law. I would also note Métis Senator Yvonne Boyer's successful sponsorship of a bill to strengthen laws against animal abuse and animal fighting. All this gives me hope and more of a confidence that the Jane Goodall Act can make headway this parliament and even become law. Also progress will break new ground. And this initiative of Senator Sinclair's can ultimately change the world for animals. Next slide, please. 
Others think so too. Bill S-241 is supported by a strong coalition of Canada's five leading zoos. The Toronto Zoo, the Calgary Zoo, the Granby Zoo, Granby Zoo the Assiniboine Park Zoo, and the Montreal Biodome. The bill is also sponsored by six leading animal advocacy organizations, the Jane Goodall Institute of Canada, Humane Canada, Animal Justice, World Animal Protection of Canada, Humane Society International Canada, and Zoo Check. The Jane Goodall Act would also fulfill several government and opposition party election committees commitments and is sponsored in the House of Commons by Toronto MP Nathaniel Erskine Smith. In my heart, I think saving the environment and helping animals can bring Indigenous and non-Indigenous people together, particularly children, through shared passion and desire to achieve these goals. In this way, the Jane Goodall Act can further reconciliation which he, with each other and, natu and the natural world. As the Honorable Murray Sinclair said on Bill S241's introduction, I quote, when we treat all animals well, we affirm our relationship with all of creation. Next slide, please. And I would wrap up and look forward to your, our discussion. Thank you. Merci, et que tu t'aimes